Hey guys, Tara here. Welcome back to the video on BMG Drive, this time Race Mania episode number 13. As you can see, we're on a new track today. This is actually the Automation Test Track, I think that's its name. And this is a whole lot different to the the Road Atlanta circuit. In in length, it's, it's definitely longer, but in, in time it's still about a five minute lap per one lap. So it'll still be two laps of this track. And there's walls absolutely everywhere, so there's no escape for any car this time. So if anything's going to split the limo in half, then it's probably this track. And we have the Barstow, the off-road lowrider Barstow in second. And then the ETK in third. And then in fourth is the only new car. It's the D-Series race, race truck, I can't remember the name of it. But it's got an 8.3 litre engine. And only does 140 mile an hour top speed with me driving it. So that's honestly quite disappointing. And then at the back, still the fastest car here is the Firehawk. So remember to comment down below which car you think is going to win. Whether it be the limo by some, all the gods coming together to bless this car with victory. Whether it be the Barstow, the ETK, the D series with its disappointing straight line speed but good acceleration. Or just the Firehawk with just its sheer weight. And it's uh, already impressive track record of taking victory so far and just causing mass destruction. Now let's just start on board here with the hopper at the front. Let's see if any of the cars all go away at the start. Yes they do. Pretty even starting all of the cars. Of course the D-Series with its much better acceleration is the first car to make contact with anything else. And the Barstow, what are you beginning this Of course if something goes into the wall here, it's going to go hard into the wall. Because down here, this is a, pretty much this is a straight line downhill. So if anything's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong quickly and it's going to hurt. So you know, the D-Series and the Firehawk already catching back up now to the back of the ETK. And there's quite a bit of heavy contact there made at the back of the That's the boot up. Well, the boot isn't really something that the Barstow actually needs to get down the course, so it should be okay. Although it looks like things are starting to get a little bit shaky up in front. Can the, uh, the hopper just hold that in front? Yes, it can. No, but it's doing a pretty impressive defensive drive since it actually is the slowest thing here and is not far off its top speed already even with the AI driving it going downhill that is going to help it and then oh that's a bit of heavy contact there with from the ETK to the Barstow are they now have they become one I think they may actually become one no they haven't it's just wrecked the bumper though on the ETK but I think that's the least of the ETK's problems right now you see it's a fairly tame start or saying that the hop is now gone everything everything's gone now okay, this, is, this is where the mayhem starts and then think going to get, turn around, the hop's going to turn around, it's going to just miss. Now the burn side, I'm pretty sure it's going to go head first into a wall. Or be it now out the hopper, is that just going to avoid contact with everything? I think it's just got so lucky there and has pretty much avoided everything. The burn side's come off the worst of the cars out of that. And before it gets confused, because I really don't want to miss the action on this track, because there's quite a few different corners like there's a few chicanes on this track as well, which wouldn't have been on the Road Atlanta circuit. Now then, can you just get some traction please, Burnside? And get you back on the road, because the front of the car looks fairly crippled, so the actual, because it's an off-road car, the actual chassis of this Barstow is actually fairly strong. It actually survived recent, decently well out of all of that. So now then, it's the D-Series that holds the lead so far. And it's actually doing better than I thought it would, because of the sheer weight of the Firehawk, I thought that would have crumpled the back of it by now. These two, I'm not actually sure if they're connected to each other at this point. I think I'll wait to get to a braking zone to see if they're actually stuck together. So I'm, I honestly don't know if they are or not. So then this is where the, the fight is at the lead, of course the D-Series has the acceleration. Out of the corners, but the Firehawk just has the outright straight line speed and is about 20-ish mile an hour faster. That was about with me driving it anyway. No way these two cars are going to get to their top speed, even down that straight with the AI driving them. And then these two, is, is the hopper going to get spun around here because this will show if they are actually connected together or not. And actually they weren't, they were just shoving each other along, so that's the hopper gone round now. Uh, here comes the Barstow, is it going to reverse right in front of the Barstow? I've got a feeling that it's going to do something stupid. Now it's trying to turn around out of the way and it's just going to avoid contact there. So got lucky there. Now then, the five back in front are coming into the first of the two chicanes I think there is in this track. Now they can back in corner. Actually, is the hopper going to be able to get around this corner? That is going to be the main question. Well, the lead pair are through with no problem. The hopper is still going the right way, crucially. 
and the Barsto is actually doing a good job of catching up to the ETK, which I think is limping quite a bit. See, it has got a front puncture and it's starting to smoke already, which uh, when you're not even halfway around the first lap, that's not a good omen for the rest of the race. Now these two now, we really are just going out. I mean, the D-Series will be in its first race. It's actually doing a decently good job of holding yourself out in front ahead of the Firehawk. I mean, it's getting a nice view here on the cinematic camera. There's not a whole lot going on with these two cars, really. Now just trying to find a way around this course. I mean, I did quite a few practice runs around this course, and there was, it was varied with the winners. I think everything besides the hopper actually won around. You know, the hopper getting around these corners is going to get around the next corner. Yes, actually, I think anything longer than that, though, wouldn't actually get around the course. And then this is the fight for the final podium position with the ETK in a lot of trouble with how slow it's already going. And honestly, I think that's going to be caused by the bumper. So if we pull the bumper off, that's probably going to solve some of the issues at least. That's not the bumper, that's a fender. That's not the uh, problem right now. If you need to get hold of the bumper and play it out, and I'm just hoping it doesn't just dis disintegrate like it has done into the car in the first place to make it unremovable. Although I think I've got a good grip on it there. Well, that's done some interesting things to it, but it hasn't detached it though, so now it's doing what I'm hoping it wouldn't do and be just becoming a massive problem, although it is actually detaching itself or just disintegrating itself. It's doing it's doing both actually. Actually I don't think this is coming off, you know. But I think that may have made some difference. Well it's made it a lot spikier anyway, and I don't know if that's actually going any faster now or slower, but the uh, Anyway, the ETK defends to the inside line, the inside side contact, and the Barso just slams its way through up the side. Get up now into P3, now back up with the fight for the lead. This is the, pretty much the only fight left on the track now. See if the D-Series can do a good job. I mean, he's got another lap and a half to actually hold on to this lead if it can. You know, coming up the hill, because the D-Series is a lot lighter, carry a lot more speed up the hill, use more momentum. Let's give it, it's gapped the uh, Firebird, Firehawk for a little bit. The Hopper's just going around doing its own thing in last place and if, it, if all the cars finish then it is going to be out of the next round. I mean, the Barstow isn't looking that bad a condition either and that's going to annoy me now with how much that bumper is sticking out but uh, nothing I can actually do about it. And now then, looking at the fight back up the front, the Firehawk still hasn't quite caught up again yet. Well, this would be the actual, this is where the actual start finish rate of the automation course is, just I decided to start them on the hill because Going downhill at over 100 mile an hour is a lot more interesting with five cars nose to tail trying to kill each other. And then coming into the braking zone though for the second hairpin, this is going to be can the Firehawk use his weight advantage to try and shove the D-Series wide into the braking zone? Actually, it looks like the D-Series has got it fairly under control, does it? No, it's actually it's been nudged wide. It's actually going to go around, miss the corner, isn't it? It's still trying to turn, but now it's got confused and missed the corner. And now the Firehawk, is he going to get through into the lead? I mean, the D-Series is trying its best to hold on. But no, then the Firehawk's now through into the lead. And the D-Series isn't actually going anywhere. I mean, it's not broken. Well, I wouldn't think it's broken. You know, the Firehawk, of course, now should go on and take a fairly easy victory. Although with a high clutch temperature, there could still be something else to go wrong with it yet. And the, the, the D-Series isn't moving. It really is not going anywhere. And one of the boss has missed the corner completely and just slams into the D-Series, actually. I mean, imagine the boss's brakes are pretty much cooked at this point. I think these two locked together. I think it's just the D series just trying to turn around while the Barstow is still there. I think that whatever has just happened, I think it's wo it's woken back up the D series anyway. But is it going to get it going again in the right direction? It is meant to go this way, and despite that contact, it actually looks in fairly good condition. Now that's also allowed the ETK to get back and back into this fight. Also, something else I've noticed right now is my frame rate is actually worse than usual. I have no idea why, because on the actual recordings of this I've done before, or the test runs anyway, it's actually fairly decent. It wasn't this bad. So apologies if it looks a bit jumpy, but that's just that's just the way it is. And now then, the Firehawk makes way around the final few coins now. It's got another lap left to go, and it should be pretty problem free. And then the Barstow up into second. Got some Decent top end speed, but it's nowhere near as, as much top end speed as what the D series has. And now, with the Barstow is struggling with its brakes already, it's not even done a lap. That doesn't bode well for the rest of the race. 
And as Vihawk just continues to pull away now, coming around the final corner now, which is a banked right hander. Before my makeshift start finish line is where the escape road that goes a bit further around the map ends. Now the Barstow still doing a good job of holding on to second place. Although it does run out a bit wider, it's got a load of understeer. That's going to give the D-Series back second place. The Barstow's missed the corner completely there. And it's run straight off the track. Is it going to get going again? It's, got, it's found reverse, so it needs to get going again quickly. Otherwise, the uh, ETK is going to come back past it. And it's going to get itself back on the track. Looks like it's actually going to get away. With that just about, well the ETK there is still looming, oh that's a huge wad of oversteer there. Imagine the handling of the Barstow isn't the great right now, here comes the ETK to actually try and make a move side by side. The ETK on the inside line, can he make the move stick? Actually got some good straight line speed still, the ETK has. That's going to be side by side contact now with the Barstow. Coming up now into the final corner, it's interesting to see which of these two actually manages to hold it up the inside. The Barstow is edging ahead, but the ETK has the inside lines, a bit of contact there. There's side by side contact, the bumpers are pretty much, I think I've actually connected although it's actually going to rip off the bumper of the ETK is it? No, it's just going to pull it side by side. It does free itself though but the Barstow even sent round has it? No, he just manages to hold it there in front. And now back to square one with these two making contact just like they were at the start of the race. Back on the first lap now and that bit of the bumper really does have to go now. I mean it's, it's been pulled by the Barstow so it is going to be a problem if we can just pull it over the side of the car and just get rid of this big sticking out bit which for some reason decided to spike with when I tried to pull it off first. I think that might have near enough solved the problem. And then coming down straight the Barstow though is now actually pulling away and the gaps between everything else. Do you think Fanny was saying well though the hopper isn't too far behind so maybe it can actually catch up to the ETK and not come out. So they're getting very close to the wall though. I think actually rubs the wall there so using all the track and then some to try and find a nice racing line although I mean, with how long it is, the steering isn't going to be the greatest thing in the world, but still, it doesn't need to drive itself into the wall to find that much apex. And the Barstow is actually pulling away quite a bit from the ETK, which is smoking. I think it might make it, depending on how bad the radiator damage is. But structurally, it should be okay to make it. And then the Firehawk, all the way out in front now, should have a pretty easy ride home to the finish. Now then, the Barstow coming down now into the first chicane. He's actually going to manage to stop. We saw from the second chicane on the first lap. The brake is absolutely cooked and it didn't actually stop. And this, and this, of course, with this chicane actually has tyre barriers on it. So it's going to hurt if it hits something. And then the brakes are smoking away a little bit. And he actually made the corner just about on the first apex and the second apex. It does make it around. So it looks like the brake issue may have solved itself. Although... With the front bumper dragging on the floor a little bit, that might be causing a few issues, but you managed to actually get around that corner, so that's all that matters really. Now that if he gets wrong at the second chicane, hopefully he just doesn't get stuck like the D-Series did back on the first lap. Now then, already making its way towards the finish line, here's the Firehawk with a dominant display. Got into the, well, I guess he got lucky with the crashes earlier on, just managing to, at the start, just getting through all of it, basically unscathed. Again, nice to hear from the cinematic camera just as it comes around the final few corners. Don't know if the clutch is still overheating when there's no warning signs coming up, so it probably isn't. He makes his way now around the second to last corner, being in a dominant display, as I said, from the Firehawk. And there's only a few more corners, well, one more corner left to go. If you can just get around there perfectly fine, then the Firehawk will be through into another round and will probably continue to be the back car until it eventually gets eliminated, I mean, just with its sheer weight. I don't really want to put something behind it in case it just can't shove it out of the way. I mean, all the shoving power is going to be done really by the Firehawk. Now, it makes its way around the final corner and gets around here, okay, which it looks like it has done. Then it just has to cross my makeshift finish line, which is where the, the dirt triangle starts, where this road goes off to the left. So now, then, coming up now to the finish line, it is going to be victory for the Firehawk once again. And is there just any stopping this thing at the minute? It looks like no, but how far ahead is it actually of the D-Series? Because, I mean, the D-Series isn't a slouch, so it shouldn't be that far behind it, really. No, it's not. It's coming up to the final corner now, so... I mean, it's got some good acceleration, but it's just that outright straight-line speed. It's just lacking a little bit, despite having an 8.3-litre engine. This thing should have gone easily over 200 mile an hour, and honestly, I don't know why it doesn't. I mean... 
Might be these pathetically tiny wheels. That might well be a reason why it doesn't, but either way, it's going around the final coin. It's going to come home in second place on its debut, so that's still a respectable result. Could have been the victory if it just didn't get confused at the hairpin. But now then, coming up now to the finish line, it's going to be second place for the D-Series, and that's through into the next round as well. So as it looks, the hopper is going to be the only thing that gets eliminated. But now, is there going to be any pre-race aggro? between the uh, the D-Series and the Firehawk. I mean, it's coming close to it under the braking zone. I mean, we're sliding down now. I mean, there's not going to be any contact anything between the two of them. But the Firehawk did go quite, well, quite a long way with, it, with its dying brakes if it's an old car. Talking of old cars, it comes to the burn side now. Well, actually, despite the cars being spaced out over the two laps, there wasn't that much between them, really. You can see there the front bumper still dragging its way along the floor. On the front of the burn side, I mean, there's been another decent display from the burn side. I mean, it's since it was last. After that contact down the straight on the first lap, and it's just rocking its way now down the little straight now up to the finish line. And it might be well, this thing might have something to say towards the other cars since it got shoved out of the way. But of course, it's also being an old car like the uh, like the Firehawk is, then the brakes may also be uh, may have gone on this thing as well. Now then, coming up now is going to be contact with the D-Series. Yes, there is going to be heavy contact with the D-Series. That's ripped off the back of it there. But now then, I think what that has done is that's going to send the D-Series into the Firehawk. Now it's just going to send both of these down the hill. I mean, that's quite quite the knock there. Now these two are just going to ride down the hill, are they? Well, the Firehawk definitely going down the hill. What about the bounce? That's going to come to a stop, I think, or near enough coming to a stop. All this happening, we've still got the ETK cleaning up now to the final corner. I mean, it's smoking away quite a bit, but the radiator leak mustn't have been that bad since it's actually survived this far. And since it also has eaten its front bumper completely, as far as it hasn't actually churned up the wheel and got stuck there or anything. So then, the ETK making its way now around the final corner with its right exhaust actually coming out where the exhaust shape is on the bumper. But now then, just now with its short run up to the finish line, Let's see how this thing stops, if this thing has any aggro with any of the other cars. But if it wants to have aggro with the D-Series or the ET or the uh, Firehawk, then it's got to go quite a long way down the hill, I'd imagine. Although this thing's just going to come to a stop. Actually, it's aiming itself towards the burn side, but I don't think it's actually going to get there. Because these two are now just having a post-race now actually down the hill. And the, uh, the Firehawk looks to be coming across actually on the D-Series. Actually, the D-Series is actually going to take the lead of the down-the-hill race, which I didn't actually see this as being a thing. No, then it's still, well, the D-Series is now taking the lead, although it means absolutely nothing. It's just going to scrape its way along the side. Is it actually going to get caught on the barrier? Well, it's actually it's going to slow it down. And it's still got the Firehawk coming actually behind it. It's used to just try and find a way to stop themselves. Now then, as the hopper makes its way around the final corner. Yeah, the burn side stops, so is the ETK. And these two are still actually yet to come to a stop. Now then, just waiting for the hopper to come to finish. I mean, it's a shame we didn't actually see the hopper get split in half at any point, since this is a splittable limo. Well then, come to finish line, and the hopper, it does finish, although be it because it's in the last place, it'll be the only car that gets replaced into the next round. Are this thing going to have any uh, post-race aggro with the ETK? It looks like it's going to go for a hard round there on the back of it, which is going to send the ETK into the barriers, no, just good for a little rock forward. Now then, talking of forward, I'm going to let these two do their thing for a second, because they're still going, they really are. I mean, once they're on the table, they're just going to roll with down the hill. Now then, anyway, let's see how the hopper drives, since that's one of the, f the three cars that actually isn't going anywhere. I mean, this thing, despite that contact at the end, it still goes in a straight line, the steering still works, and its only downside is that it's painfully slow and doesn't actually, well it has no speed to compete and the acceleration isn't there either. Now then, for the burn side, despite making that contact at the end with the D-Series, this thing still drives pretty much a straight line because like I said, the front of it may be a bit crippled but all the things that matter are still there and all the things that still work and the important things like the wheels and that crucially are all in the right direction still. And then the ETK which was smoking away the finish, sure the acceleration isn't the greatest, but then again, it never was on this car. It's still smoking away, and that's definitely the radiator that's gone. The straight line speed, yeah, it's still there, but 
it's I mean whatever damage has been done to it ultimately made it slower than the bar in front of it and now then let's see what the uh, these two are doing well the D series has come to a stop and I think the uh, Firehawk has as well and yeah both of these now made their way all the way down the bottom of the hill up to the corner uh, are these stuck on the wall? Well, we need to know that wall's grippy for future reference if the car actually goes into that. Surprisingly, though, the fuel tank, as you can see there, there's that grey bit there in the boot, can actually get taken out. Well, it may have done, but it's still got enough fuel in it, so it was, it's not a bad leak if indeed it is leaking at all. In spite of that's, that hit at the end of it, that's the most damage that's actually been done to the Firehawk in this video. I mean, the brakes on this thing aren't doing an awful lot either, but then again, with a car of this weight, and it's based off quite an old muscle car, you wouldn't really expect it to have the best brakes in the world. Now then, finally the D-Series, let's see how this thing still drives. I mean, it only took a whack in the back, really, at the end, and a few knocks at the start. Definitely quite a lot is easily, this thing is the fastest accelerating car we have. So far, anyway, because with the, the only car being replaced, which will be probably the front running car for next time that that record is going to stay for another video at least and the brakes on this thing fairly decent as well I mean the back of it there surprisingly is still actually attached to the car so don't leave a like if you enjoyed the video leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos you want to check out my discord server which will be linked in the description down below along with my facebook twitter instagram so definitely going to follow me on all of those as well and what? How has the ETK ended up down here? Why is it back here? Why is it on three wheels? And um, I have many questions about why the ETK has ended up down here. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.